Hi everyone, it's Laura here, and in this video, I'm going to show you how you can import orphan quilt blocks into pre-quilt as, um, as fabric, and then use them to kind of play with your visualization when putting them all together into a quilt. So the example that I'm going to use are some old blocks that I have, um, and I am going to first import them into pre-quilt. So what I did is I took pictures of these blocks um, using my phone and then I saved them to my computer. And now I'll show you how to get them into prequel. So the first step you're gonna to wanna to do is here at the dashboard, you're gonna to wanna to click on fabric. And so you can see all the other fabric swatches that I've, I've added over time. Um, and I'm gonna do this bulk upload. So I'm gonna click here and I'm actually going to do all three of my blocks at one time and I'm gonna so you can do that by hitting shift and clicking on them and then open so as you can see I now have three new blocks um, the background fabric or the background is here and I'm gonna want to crop that out so that when I import this into my quilt it's just really snug to just the fabric of the block itself so the way you do that is you go into edit fabric and I'm gonna name this um, blue block and then when you want to crop this um, I probably maybe didn't take the best photo because it's a little bit tilted um, so when you hit shift, so if you can take the picture more um, so it's squared, but I'm going to hit shift and then the up arrow and I can just start cropping from the bottom and I can do the same from the top. Again, click on the number, hit the shift button and then the up arrow. You can see how I have to crop a little bit more there. Um, again, shift and up arrow for the right side. Oh, down arrow if you want too far. Um, and then again, shift and up arrow for the left side. So now I have my block pretty well cropped. It's, it's going to give me a very good idea of what that would look like in my quilt. Um, I'm going to go and do the same thing here for this one. So again, shift and up arrow very quickly. Shift and, up, shift and up arrow for the top. Okay, so you can see how quickly you can you can take photos of your blocks and get them into prequel. And they don't have to be perfect images, they don't have to be excellent. They just give you an idea. Okay, so peach block. Okay, so there you can see that's cropped, and then I'm gonna import this one as well. So um, shift and up arrow, shift and up arrow, shift and up arrow, shift and up arrow. Okay, so now I have them really well cropped. And I'm going to save that. So now that my blocks are here in prequel into my fa uh, fabric stash, I can now start using them in a quilt. So I'm going to go back to the quilts tab and that'll open up my quilt dashboard and I'm going to start a new quilt. So these blocks are pretty small. They're three inches by three inches. And so I would like to have a bit kind I would like to have them um, kind of in a little bit of a, a larger um, block, but not too big. So I'm actually going to make it six inches by six inches and I'm going to use this grid. Actually, no, I'm going to keep the five inches by five inches and I'm going to use this grid. And so um, our default is that you'll get 10 columns by 10 rows. And I have um, about nine of these blocks. So I'm actually going to make this um, I think it's uh, five columns by five columns. And so that will give me nine center blocks where I can put these orphan blocks in and then maybe something to play around on the outside. I'm not really sure yet, so I'm just gonna play with the idea. So the first step is to make a custom block. 
and you can name that. I'm going to name that B1. And as you can see here, um, it's a five by inch, a five by five inch block with um, grid lines every, there's six total. I'm actually going to make that five total so that these grid lines are now um, every inch. So I can kind of gauge how my three inch by three inch block will look inside here. Um, the next step is to import a shape that I can then start loading the fabric into. I've scaled the, the shape up to be three inches by three inches. And now what I want to do is put in that block here. So I go to prints and as you can see here now, my blocks are there. Um, we don't, I'm not going to use them here because I'm going to actually import them so that I can get that that crisp um, cropping that I did. So now I'm going to select and it tiles the block so I can play with that here. So I'm going to again shift up and I'm going to fill uh, to fill my quilt here with um, the block, this shape with the, the block. Um, the reason why it tiles is that if you have a repeating, so if you have a large fabric, it'll do the repeating to fill the space. So now I have my block and if I want to have a background to make to make this orphan block the same shape as all the other ones and also to give it a little bit of a background, I can do that by importing another square and making it the full size. And so here in the layers tab, a lot like um, Adobe Illustrator or Photoshop, you can change the layering. So now we have this float, this block floating on a background and we can now change the background color. So I can go here to block info and see again, this is the information, but if I click on the shape, it'll bring up the information just on the shape. And I'm going to keep it color tag A, um, but I'm going to edit it here. So I'm going to see what kind of colors start looking, looking good. Oh, maybe I might want to have a blue. Maybe I want to go totally different and have kind of a pearl pink. Okay, so maybe I'll stick with this dusty peach and, um, and I can save this block then. If I want to do something a little wonky, maybe I don't want this, the blocks to be perfectly square, you can always tilt them here and that'll give you an idea of what it would look like if if maybe you don't want it to have it perfectly um, square inside this, perfectly bordered, or if you want to applique it on. Okay, so the next stop then is to save to quilt. And now I have this block prepared and I'm going to put it here in this quilt right there. So I click on the cell and then I add to quilt. So that's my first block with a background color. Um, if I wanted to randomize it, I can always Oh. Okay, I'm going to go in here and figure out. Okay, so it did change. Okay, so it just needed to update. I'm going to save this so I don't lose any progress that I have. And then I'm going to then do the next one. So I'm going to go here and make another custom block. Again, I'm going to keep the five inches by five inches um, and change the grid line so that they're every inch. I'm going to import a background first and then I'm going to import my the one for my block and I'm going to go to prints again import and manage and I'm going to do this second one now. Again, I'm going to play with the scale so that it fills just one block. And I'm going to tilt it. Um, but I would like this background color to be a different color tag. So now I've, I've, I've linked it to color tag B and save to quilt. And now what I need to do is put that one right there. So as you can see, I have one of this block and one of these blocks. Um, I'm going to do it one more time just so you can see it one more time. And then you can really imagine like what you can do with, with any of your orphan blocks that you have. Um, so again, 
I'm going to go up here to make custom block. You can name it just to keep things organized. I find these to be helpful, especially if you know the common denominator. So if these blocks were to say three and a half inches, you could make it 12 by 12. And you can see the grid lines every half an inch. Um, whatever is, is most helpful to you. I'm actually going to go back though and change that back to six by six. Or sorry, five by five. And it would have been 10, sorry, instead. Okay, so there I have, um, I'm going to import my print, go import prints select and I'm going to scale that up so it fits the whole shape okay um, and then I'm going to put in my background again because I I did it afterwards it's going to be on top so I'm going to move that down I would like to tilt this see what that looks like and then I'm going to link the background color tag C and maybe just proactively change it to this lilac and then save to quilt and then add that to the quilt and so you can quickly get all your orphan blocks in um, if you didn't want to have a border or background to these you can just make the image of your block fit the entire cell and just start putting the next one next to it. Um, and so that's how you can start using things that you have in your stash or any kind of UFOs you have and help pre uh, use prequilt to help get you to um, all the way to the end. Uh, again, you can also download the image and it'll show you what blocks you have um, as well as which of the images that you used and the color the background colors here for the swatches and then it'll give you a picture of your progress so far okay thanks so much I hope these tutorials help if you have any um, questions about things that you're trying to do please don't hesitate to email us at hello at prequilt.com and we can either help you out uh, via email or if it's something that's best done visually, we can try and make a video for you. Okay, I hope you have a good day. Thanks. Bye.